The kingdom of God is God's royal reign and rule, his power, his authority over everything and everyone, all times, all places, forever and forever and forever. There's no beginning to his kingdom. There's no end to his kingdom. His rule has always been and will always be. And that's what our security is based upon, is God's sovereign rule, God's sovereign power, God's sovereign authority. It just goes on and on and on. And it's like this, whether you see it or not, whether you've experienced or not, it's like this. It's sort of like when, uh, I don't know if it worked like this for anybody else, but when, when Mary got pregnant with our first child, all of a sudden I started seeing pregnant women everywhere. I had never paid any attention to pregnant women. I, I didn't see any pregnant women. I really didn't care about any pregnant women. But when my wife got pregnant, it was like, man, there's a bunch of pregnant women all over the planet. Everywhere I go, I see pregnant women. What is the deal? It's just that my eyes got opened. They were there all along, walking around, eating, <laughs> doing what they do. But I didn't pay any attention to them at all. Somebody had to open my eyes, and it was God through the act of my wife getting pregnant. He used that to open my eyes so I could see that there's a world beyond your little puny, tiny world. That's what he wants to do this morning. There's a kingdom that we've been called to enter into. He invites us to see it, and he wants to make it real to us today. It's already real. He wants to make it real to you and to me. The kingdom does not depend upon your belief in it for its existence. It already exists. It's already here. It'll always be here, whether you and I see it or not. So in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, Jesus says, the time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Another translation says time is up. Time is up. You remember hide and go seek? Playing that game? You ever been in a situation where they're doing the countdown and you just couldn't find a place to hide? You're scrambling, you're sweating, you're like, oh no, come on, man, give me a, a nook, a cranny, a corner, a something, and you just couldn't find it. It came, and your time was up. Everyone is going to be found by God. Every person playing this life game is going to be found by God. Whether you've looked or found a place to hide, it doesn't matter. God is going to find you, good and bad, ready or not. Here he comes. So, Because some of us have made ourselves almost unreachable when it comes to God. We declare, we believe the lies and we have repeated the lies that I'm too poor, I'm too rich, I'm too smart, I'm too cool, I'm too much of anything for God to help. But God is declaring today that that's what he is, his middle name should be, help. Help God. God, help me. Because that's what God is doing all over the planet. He's helping people. All you see just like before my wife got pregnant, all I could see was what I could imagine and what I could think. But God is more than what you can imagine or what you can think. He's far more than that. In John chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, 
Again, the words of Jesus. I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. So Jesus says, if you want to see and enter the kingdom, you must believe in and follow him. That's what being born again is. It's just a simple you coming to terms with, I can't do life on my own. I need a living savior. I need a living God who will come and help me because help is like his middle name. So I've told this story before. Um, before I met Jesus, one of my roles, it just seems like I just traded you know, roles. I did a number of different things with my life. None of them were too good. So before I met Jesus, I wound up I, used to, I, I guess I used to think of myself as like a black hippie. So I just, sort of just hung out with a crazy group of guys from South Shore. And um, lo and behold, it, it came with its own paraphernalia, drugs, and drug lifestyle. And uh, when things got really bad, I wound up, long story short, I wound up in, a, in the grips of a cult, uh, Hare Krishna. Some of you are too young to even know what that is. A couple of you might be a little too old to know what that is. It's, a, it's just in a certain era of, of history. But it was, it was a cult. It was a Hindu Based cult, a religion from the East. And uh, I was as sick as I could be while I was inside of this temple, while I lived there. And all along, I was praying to God. I was crying out to, to someone, asking, is this real? Is this God real? What am I doing here? I don't know how I wound up here, but is this real? And uh, went on from there to uh, on one visit. I had a visit back home. I went back home to see my mom and dad. And uh, while I was there, my mom was speaking to me, and she says, Junior, because that's what she says, Junior, you don't look good. Something's wrong with you. She started poking at my skin. She says, there's something wrong with this. It doesn't, you, you just don't look good. Well, she was being easy on me because I had gained about 35 pounds and most of it was poisonous fluids because my kidney was shutting down. I wound up in intensive care, 30 days. I saw the guy next to me die I started getting really afraid. I was 20 years old, wondering how in the world did I get so sick? And all of a sudden, I hear a voice in my head saying, you should read the Bible. There was a Gideon's Bible in the drawer. It took me days, though, to read it, because at first, my first response was, I've read some of the Bible. I don't think I need to read the Bible. I'm good but it just wouldn't stop. Over and over again, you need to read the Bible. When I finally picked up the Bible and read the first book in the New Testament, by the time I was done, the lights were turned on. For the first time in my life, I saw that Jesus Christ had died for me, for all my sins. And then, I'm a slow learner, the voice again started saying, you know what you need to do, you need to give your life to Jesus. And at that point, I'm like, oh man, if I give up all the stuff I've 
I have. This is what he's talking about. I gotta, he's asking me to give up all my stuff. <laughs> Which was nothing. <laughs> but it seemed so important at the time. I'd have to give up drugs and partying and just a, just a crazy hedonistic lifestyle. I'd have to give all that up. And I was holding on to it for dear life. Finally, I got down on my knees one night, exhausted from just this mental battle, and prayed, God, if you're real, would you just come in and take over? I woke up the next morning, and I've shared this story before. The first person I saw was my father. Didn't have a good relationship with him. And a voice on the inside is saying, look at your dad. Don't you love him? Don't you just love your dad? And I'm like, no. What happened to me? What is going on? And then I thought, I bet he came inside. That was my first thought. I bet he came inside. I didn't know who Jesus really was, but I knew something had happened to me. I knew someone had come into a relationship on the inside of me so that I was no longer praying just to God on the outside, but I, I had God on the inside. That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God takes all of the might and power that there is and it funnels it into your heart so that God lives in you, the Spirit lives in you, Jesus lives in you. It's not just you talking to someone who's distant, who's far away, but you are having communion with someone close and personal. And so the kingdom of God keeps doing that type of thing over and over and over. So in this room, there are, we don't know how many kingdom stories where the kingdom comes and it disrupts, interrupts your life because it's been waiting with this packaged gift of life and salvation and hope. So... What I want to do, I just want to make some statements here, and then we'll be done. Because the kingdom of God looks like what it says in Isaiah 61. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. So... I'm just going to read you a list of things that the kingdom of God wants to disrupt and see if you can identify it with any of these. Are there any people who are brokenhearted? Are there any people that are captive, that are prisoners? You're doing what you don't want to do. Are there any people who are in mourning? You've lost someone, something. Is there anyone who has ashes on their heads? Will you despair of life itself? Maybe today someone's in the room and they just don't think life is worth living. God wants to come to you today. And he wants to give you freedom, good news, comfort, release, favor, 
blessing. Let me close with this. God wants to rebuild you, restore you, revive you, so that you can get in on the building, restoring, revival business. Like your daddy has a company, and it's all about rebuilding. It's all about restoring. It's all about reviving. And he's, he's, he's always looking for new workers. That would be you. That would be you. He is asking you to consider, don't you want to work for my company? I'm all about rebuilding, restoring, reviving. And you can get in on this family business. See, so the kingdom of God, whether you see it or not, it's always moving. You know, the ocean's deepest place is over six miles. That's a long way. The only way we know that creatures exist at that depth We've never seen them except by instruments, radar-type instruments. So there's a snail that lives at the depth of 5.16 miles below the sea level. When's the last time you walked five miles? Some of you probably have never walked five miles. Watch it. <laughs> and that's okay that's okay because <laughs> I haven't walked five miles recently but you would know five miles is a long way down it's a long way down the kingdom of God is deeper than that it's deeper than that God is inviting all of us into his kingdom. Maybe you've never met Jesus. I mean, met Jesus. So we're not talking about following a list of rules and regulations. We're talking about you get to meet the creator of the universe. You get to meet the king over all the kings, the Lord over all the lords. That's, what, that's who you get to meet. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. So if you never met Jesus as he really is, today could be your day. You should get to meet Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior who died for you. And for those of you who already know him, you need to accept his invitation to fully submit yourself into your family business. Don't just take the rebuilding for yourself. So Hammer's been rebuilt, restored, revived, and he's put himself in a place where he's doing that for other men. He's helping them to see that they need to be restored, revived, rebuilt. So right before worship, why don't you close your eyes? You don't have to. Just a suggestion. Close your eyes. Hold out your hands. God's going to give you something good. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Rest on your people. Rest on these hands. Fill the empty places. Fill the desert places, the dry places. The places without water. The places where there's no food left. Fill those places, God. Fill your people today. You are the one who fills all of our needs, who does more than what we can imagine and think. So come, Holy Spirit, do what we can't imagine, what we can't even think of. Do it in us. In Jesus' name, amen.